Hello, welcome everyone to this hummingbird.、Um, watercolor paint alarm, and on this、uh, very very fine spring day, the sun is very sh much shining, and I need to pull weeds very soon. And so pull weed, you know, the weed that's out there is all over. And、uh, my husband actually helped me, but I still have to do it. And so、um, this is a very fun one, and all the information you can find it on my blog post, probably called Watercolor Hummingbird. You know, with red flower, something like that, and uh, and uh, now also a copy of this drawing will be there too, right? And then you guys can copy along、uh, or trace it, and then、uh, have fun making this. I think you should try, and、uh, let me know how it goes. Um, it is quite uh of um, there's a couple of、uh, tricky part, but not really. You know, over there, and this is actually easier than you think, and so um, it should be done in a very、uh, speedy time. And、uh, I really think that you guys should, should try to do that、um, with me, okay? And、um, and also, yeah, and、uh, also you can go to my shop. I would like you to go look around in my shop and see if there's something that you would like. And、um, also, uh, uh, after I turn off the, you know, to the end, I actually put a little bit of uh, uh, a purple color here, okay? So I wanted to make sure I point that out. I intensify this、uh, just a little bit. Okay, I actually splashed that right in front of you to answer to one of the requests of、uh, the YouTube subscriber, and so、um, and other than that, I don't think I did anything else. And so uh, uh, brushes and actually all the color. There's a little bit more color. I use a little bit of phthalo blue and then、uh, ultramarine and indigo and all the really pleasing combination. I'll talk about that as you watch the watch the video. Okay, so let's not talk too much, and we will dive right into the painting. Okay, we'll get started, and、um, the brush is going to be the、uh, flow, flow brush. I wanted to show you.、Um, I just dropped it to the floor. I wanted to show you.、Um, I find this brush because I have,、um, you know, a lot. It's called Big Cloud, and maybe we'll use that、um, for the wash. And this is、uh, one of the Asian,、uh, uh, the Chinese Asian one, and I do not remember where it came from. <laughs> Ancient. That means okay.、Um, now,、uh, one of the color that we're gonna start with is、uh, we're gonna do the cap area. Okay. Now I have the, I have his,、uh, I have the his. Let's just call him his. Hopefully, I remember to call him his.、Um, the the his beak over here.、Uh, the hummingbird, as I know it. You know, I'm not an expert.、Um, that.、Uh, You know, but I do read a book about it,、um, and we'll talk about that a little bit.、Um, they're smaller, and so I try to make it as small as I can. You know, I think I did a decent job with it, but you know, like I, you know, you know the best that I can, right? And so、um, I hope you guys are okay. You know, if it is not,、um, you know, totally,、um, you know, the right size, because I know as I observe them. Um, you know, I actually have flowers out there now. We are doing this.、Uh, this is the、um, the blue violet color that I have. I, I think it's called dioxazine purple. Okay. Now I'm doing what I usually do. Okay, with this is I'm going to pull this color out, and as I go, I will gently leave、um, a cap over here. Okay, the cap or、uh, white kind of leave the highlight over here for the top of his uh, of his uh, of his head cap. Okay, because、uh, that's just、uh, I like that. It's kind of pretty. Okay, so、um, the wash that I put in here is not very intense. Okay, it is kind of just like a. Okay, I'm gently softening this area because I have plans for a different color, and then I have to go up here to. You know, just something that we try to remember, okay? But if we miss it, then it's not、uh, such a big deal, and we're not going to beat ourselves up. Is that uh, uh, remember that、uh, violet and all the purple、uh, color family do dry very fast, okay? So if we so I you you can see that I successfully leave the highlight there, and I'm happy. But um, just um, just so you remember, okay? And、uh, I'm quite, you know, naughty, and I don't know why I do this. I want to drop a little bit more intense of the pigment over here, okay? But um, 
you know, it's really not quite necessary because we're going to come in and add other color. We're going to, with the hummingbird, we're going to try to accomplish, and you can tell me if you like it, um, the effects that they are so colorful. And so at points, we're going to uh, try to layer color, okay? And then you see, which is um, also a good uh, combination uh, to learn, okay? Uh, about combination now. So my area underneath all those uh, purple is actually quite, you know, I just really uh, try very hard, uh, quite wet. Um, I really try very hard to um, have um, some of the color there because just that's just um, how I wanted uh, things to happen. But um, sometimes it might not happen. And then uh, I'm going to like uh, at the end of the purple over here, just drop a little bit of my phthalo blue, okay? I'm going to use this phthalo blue um, here and there, but not a lot of it because for some reason, as I, in my practice, I, you know, I like the color, but I didn't like the way it is not a transparent watercolor, okay? And so um, it doesn't look transparent for some reason, but you know, I will, you know, try to do the best that we can, okay? And uh, not uh, worry too much about it, okay? Now, um, you know, with the pictures and all the things that I went through over here, um, it it should be quite uh, dark of a blue color, okay, for um, for hummingbird. But I'm going to try to uh, um, uh, make this a little bit lighter, just for artistic rendition, okay. And so um, uh, we will we will see if we like it. Okay, so we're gonna use a lot of a uh, lot of uh, blue color. Okay, so we have um, we have uh, you know I use a little bit of phthalo blue and now I'm going to use a little bit of uh, darker blue over here. Okay, but not uh, we're gonna go into indigo later. Okay, just have it come out here and then you are you're going to see me. You know, strict way try to soften it okay soften that color because there's like you know the color are all merged together i i am not trying to uh, do a harsh line okay where the color are more merged together so i'm going to try my best you know to um you know it's a it's a quite an ultramarine color okay that i'm putting over here and then uh i will come in here and try to um, put a little bit of a darker blue, okay, as uh, as it go towards the the phalo, okay. Um, <laughs> I have a hummingbird bird police in my house, and that is my husband. You know, uh, he knows that I'm doing this, and he said, "Caddy, just put a lot of a lot of really bright color on hummingbird. I like it when they're like that." So I'm trying. <laughs> He's funny. He does give me a advice sometimes. Uh, so, you know, if you have kind of like an ultramarine, okay, this will be a good color because, um, you know, I always like to, okay, you can see that I'm dropping color as I go, right? So this, this part is like kind of wettish, okay? And don't worry about the, the, the scale of the bird or the feather yet, okay? We'll, we'll come in and, uh, um, and do our best okay so over here i can actually afford to have a little bit of a harsh line over this area okay so we can do that you know a harsh line is our friend sometimes when we are doing things like this okay now i have uh you can you're gonna be able to see my drawing i have a harsh line over there too okay and these are the thing that i'm going to try to do right now and i will explain to you you'll see how it unfold later okay Okay, so try to um, do a little bit, a um, little bit of a focus, and then come down here just a little, okay? But um, because of my uh, annoying uh, artistic rendition preference, if you may call it, I need to, we need to soften the line over here a little bit, okay? And just kind of let it just kind of look soft. I just think that it is kind of nicer if we l uh, let this area to go a little bit light, okay? And I will, you know, show you more. Now I'm going into the indigo right now and uh, try to do a, like quite a thick pigment of indigo and see if I still have time, you know, as I drop it in, I will know, you know, 
Um, so not a, not. I think I have passed the time a little bit, but I'm still going to do it because the color, and maybe that blue uh, ultramarine blue color dry fast. Okay, uh, because I need this area to be a little bit darker as it come down. Okay, and so we're just going to uh, try to do that. Okay, just a little bit, and then uh, if uh, you know, because this is like. Um, you know, I wouldn't call it wet because the, you can see that the color are not dispersing, but it is the, in between that state when the paper is kind of wet and, um, uh, but it's drying, okay? Not wet enough to drop in color. And so this is a very, very delicate time for us. And, uh, if you guys don't want to follow me, you know, I'm just wanted to leave the paper alone, uh, for a minute, then, uh, you know, and then come back. Uh, you know, you're most welcome to do so. Um, I also, you know, uh, just uh, maybe now that we're at this point, I will take the time to uh, tell you guys a little bit about, you know, the paper, right? Now, a lot of time you might think, oh, you know, I am, uh, well, I wanted to see your palette and see what kind of water you pick, you know, and why is it that I have, uh, I have such a hard time, you know, um, getting it all nice and exactly what I wanted. Well, now I'm trying to see if it's dry because I'm going to go in with that ultramarine color. Okay. Um, because the problem is that, um, however much is on, uh, on the paper from your brush, you know, also dictate why sometimes, um, you know, it's very, very watery and hard to control. Okay. Because, um, and that, um, it changes every time. Okay. And so, um, you know, because of the, the problem of the paper, right? Now, uh, you know that was purple, that was the dioxin purple, and now I'm pulling this color out, you know, because um, it's, it's the whole mixing of the color, okay? Of the, you know, so if you, as you're painting along, you will see that with, um, with this little painting, I hope we're not going to go long, but we never know, right? No promise from Kathy. <laughs> um, that uh, we do um, run into uh, layering, Okay, layering of color. Okay, I'm intensifying the, this uh, phthalo kind of blue over here. Okay, um, because uh, the first layer was not intense to my liking. Okay, so I'm dropping a little bit more. Now, and also sometimes, you know, maybe you guys are a little uh, heavy handed, you know, on pigments and you're, you know, you have more you know, you have enough, you know, of a color that you're happy, then you don't have to do the second layer, okay? Um, so that is as you po po progress in the process, then you can decide for yourself, okay? And then we're, you know, it might look blotchy, but don't worry, okay? We will, Kathy will do her best to try to, um, you know, uh, have a good time and make sure that things are doing correctly, okay? For you guys, going correctly not doing okay and uh, so let's do this wing part of, all, all the way over here okay uh, because I wanted this area to leave it alone so that when I come in and do the next layer it will be pretty okay so now we're going to the green color that we're gonna use today is um, sap green and cadmium yellow light okay now over here I am dropping a little bit of cadmium yellow light now um, it's not necessary, actually, in my first try, I didn't need to do so, but I'm doing it because uh, I just want things to be consistent because, you know, as we paint over here, you will see, okay? So I'm just putting um, any time that, uh, well, we'll try, okay? And then I, now I'm going into the sap green, okay? And this is like, it already has some yellow in it, okay? So that's, that's, that's good. You know, you put sap green on top of the on top of the yellow is just make it more bright, okay? Now I'm using like uh, what I call the feathering bird uh, painting stroke, okay? I'm just gonna just kinda do it like that, okay? So it looks like the feather are coming out and then the feather are coming down here. And um, I don't think, you know, as with my practice that just this one layer is gonna be sufficient, you know, to, um, so I'm going to come back here. I know I will come back here. Okay, what is this I'm doing is this is from what I observe, okay, with all the photograph and the book that uh, when they flap their wing out like that, there is a little part of the wing that go in here and it is for this bird, it is a green color, okay? Now, um, so uh, this is 
gets still kind of wet, so I'm going to go in with my indigo color, you know, my, uh, you know, my green mix that you guys have seen, you know, and just kind of drop it so that it will be a little bit intense, more intense in certain area, okay? But if it is not, then don't worry, okay? We will just either give it up, <laughs> uh, just um, give it up, meaning uh, we don't care, you know, uh, about it, or we will just, uh, you know, use a smaller brush and get more intense color later, okay? That's just uh, to show the depth, okay? And so is this, uh, that's why I put this uh, darker color because I wanted, you know, not only use this highlight to show the round shape, you know, this also show the round shape. So I might just come in a little bit, you know, over here to make the head look rounder, okay? I haven't decided yet, but we'll see. Now, uh, we're going to go into the feather part, which is uh, very, very fun, okay? Now, uh, so what I am going to do is I'm going to go into now with the... Um, I have decided not to use red purple, so it would be this dioxazine, uh, uh, you know, this blue purple, okay? Now, uh, so that you will uh, be ready, I'm going to do this darker part of the purple and with gray, okay? So it's uh, because this is the part that's facing you, okay? This wing part over here, this is the cover part, the top part of the wing, okay? Now, we're, this part, we're painting the bottom part of the wing, okay? So it should be more trans transparent or translucent but um that the best that we can do to portray that okay and so like um not so uh, our color would not be like too intense okay because uh, intense look pretty but uh, we don't want intensity right now okay so i'm coming in and just uh you know doing a feathery touch you know actually you know there's really not much feather over here this part of the bird is actually quite hard uh, because it's the wing and that's how they lift themselves, right? So they need it to be quite hard. Okay, so I was halfway telling you, you need to be prepared, Kathy. <laughs> okay, so you need to use this blue purple, have the blue purple uh, go into the green, okay? And then it will give you kind of like a brownish color at this part where they meet each other. Don't worry about it, okay? I think it's pretty. Um, okay, so I'm doing this and then the preparation is you need to have the paint spray also ready for you, okay? So while that color is still just a tag, kind of uh, wet, I'm going to go in. My, my paintbrush now has paint spray, okay? And just go in here. And suddenly, this part will be darker. This part right here of the wing will be a little bit darker because that's what we needed to portray, okay? This part uh, is a little bit darker. We also use pink gray and the same purple over there, but a more diluted uh, intensity, okay? Because then there's a separation, uh, sorry, then there's a separation of the two parts of the wings that we needed to. I'm actually quite comfortable with my setup, except I bump the camera once in a while and uh, I, I'm going to have to um, uh, just keep putting up with that and be aware of that, okay? So I'm actually quite happy with this. And so I can come in and, you know, uh, smooth it out. Actually, I like the white, so I'm not going to smooth out too much, okay? Now, while we're, this is like, we're not going to bother. So I'm like, just gonna go in and do the wings, okay? Cause like my, my mind is like kind of focused on that. So I'm just gonna come in and do that now, this part, uh, more diluted, a uh, diluted, um, diluted. Okay, I'll show you. This is diluted to me. Okay, more diluted. Uh, the the blue purple. Okay, and I'm going to. It's very very easy. Uh, this part because um, you know in nature the the uh, look at how pretty. I mean, if I may say so, <laughs> I like it. I think it's pretty. The uh, wings is fluttering. Okay, and so. You are not you. You're not going to need to. It's not a a doll or some object that is uh, very uh, sna stagnant, okay? Because it move around. So what you can see is that this kind of thing, you know, suggests movement, okay? Like the Chinese would call it the flying white. They you you use a brush and they will just go, whoosh, you know, and and whatever white is there, they will just accept that, and that's a very desirable. In fact, you know, the I guess the more master you are, the more flying white, you know, you can predict, right? Like like what I just did, right? I swipe, but um, so such a light um, 
stroke that the white just kind of appear and they they like that you know they call it flying white it's very very desire when they paint, paint birds feather and many other things too you know things that are have movement maybe hair okay but uh, still remember the highlight okay and so you're gonna you know do strokes like that and don't be afraid of it okay and uh, these flying whites um are very very desirable so you know don't think that you have a problem over here okay now when that's done because it also has shadow okay the color are coming actually from the other side right and so we're we uh we're doing some paint spray okay just um here and there don't um like when you overlap it like a very light uh light wash okay don't um try to uh cover every one of the pretty gray that you i mean pretty purple that you have um, painted okay just uh, kind of here and there just uh, so that it suggests to the mind that there is uh, some shadow going on here okay that's my rendition of it anyway okay so that is that, that is totally done and i am so happy with it okay now let's uh, do this part over here now because that part is actually the cover the cover uh, the cover of the wing meaning the top part of the wing the wing that's facing the sun okay so as we do that um uh this part need to be more intense than that okay because this is the back part right and we have done that like, and i actually explained that also carefully when we did the um, owl the barn owl okay and so you don't want you you still want highlight okay so i just leave a little bit of highlight here but you don't need as many flying white wow you know i actually um you know introduced the vocabulary <laughs> of the you know chinese uh, artists painting to you guys you guys are gonna feel so uh you know i i suggest if you want to run into a real a a asian artist or a chinese you know you talk to them about the flying white okay that they will be so impressed with you you know i like uh talking to artists and i <laughs> you know i am a nerd you know in many many things like i told you about harry potter's nerd right a wand uh, to a wizard is uh, like a brush to a to a artist okay and that's uh, i i just uh, make that up myself i'm so proud of myself for that are you guys so proud of me um and so uh <laughs> you know i you know i like you know sometimes when i so oh sorry i just use uh, some paint spray i pick up some paint spray and i just darken the area okay and it will dry lighter but i actually quite like the way how intense this is but it will dry lighter okay don't worry and uh you know and so i i love uh, talking to artists right and so um one time uh hi dr butler if you watch my thing i, I think sometimes he does watch my thing he never respond to me you know, Dr. Bella, if you watch my thing and you don't respond to me, now what I'm doing is I'm using that ultramarine and I put some here. Okay? Just, you know, picky. Um, because I see that in the in the picture of the bird. Okay? I see that. And so I, I don't want to pull it out of my tablet and show you guys, you know. But don't worry, though. I don't copy people's thing, you know, because I have my own... Uh, okay i want some white over here okay i want to leave some maybe maybe we'll see okay uh, if we can do that so that's why i'm dapping that area off um uh, 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 okay let's paint these uh really really hard wings down here okay so with that um you know i it is my you know i uh you know my artist um you know what do you call that my artist rendition i guess you know that this uh, the color choice that i i make is the same as this one you know but since this is also the cover part okay if you see the bird he's almost backing up backing up from the flower that he's trying to you know find a way to get down here right and so um, i really like that gesture you know because i've seen how birds fly like that especially if you see the mag the mad pipe is it like mad pipe? Yeah, they are, you know, it's easy to observe them because they um, they just go around, and they, they, they just fly, you know, and uh, you, uh, you know, and you can see the movement and they, you know, I've seen them, they were fluttering. Oh, okay, I remember now where I see them. I saw them when they were, um, when they were, uh, um, there's some uh, have quinacridone burnt orange here with uh, hummingbird, but I'm going to use the, 
uh, consistent with this color, okay? Now, and so, um, uh, uh, where, where did I saw them that they were doing that? They were doing that when they were trying to get as close as they can. Now, right here, I'm doing a base layer, okay? Uh, just a base layer, and then I put a uh, uh, gray on top, okay? So we don't need it to be, you know, really, really, um, you know, uh, intense, the color, okay? So um, it'll be more like kind of like a grayish, you know, kind of like this, but maybe a little bit less intense, okay? How's that? That's at least uh, that's try what I try to accomplish, okay? And so... Uh, we can just uh, see how much color we can get out of one dip of pigment. I'm already dipping again, okay? And uh, so when they were trying to um, get the bird seed, and uh, I'm not mean to them, I just try to, because they took it all from the, they're quite uh, mean to the little bird. And so sometimes I just, um, you know, make it a little more difficult for them. They have plenty, they got plenty uh, from the bird feeder, the time I had the bird feeder. But, um, and so I make it hard and I don't, I, I used, I used to like, I call it my bird feeder. Actually, it's not a feeder. It's a pine cone with, uh, with, uh, peanut butter and a lot of seed on it. Okay. They just love that. They absolutely love that in the spring and they come and visit me. But then the magpie, um, take it all from the little bird and they, you know, they chase them away. They are very, very strong. You know, I'm sure that if you get their beak touching you, it will hurt a lot, okay? And so I was trying to protect the little bird and make sure that they get their share. And so I I tie them on that one branch, but with no nowhere for the for the magpie to, wear, to rest themselves, okay? And that's uh, my method of uh, trying to protect the little bird. And, uh, and so they're trying to, they still try. And so I saw them suspend themselves in flight with this position just like what this bird uh, we're painting is doing. Isn't that funny? And so all this area is kind of wet. I know this is dry. Um, can we go in here? Okay, let's do the beat a little bit first, okay? Now, I, I'm not planning to um, do a lot of, uh, but I know that I'm not planning to do a lot of color, okay? But I know that it looked like there's some red on the beat. And so we're gonna put in some red, however, ow. <laughs> hey, today's my dropping. Uh, uh, however, it will be just very, very slight, okay? Very, very slight. And so what I'm going to do, because I don't want to mess with the beat a lot, because as I try to mess with it, it looks, um, what does it look, okay? So I have some pink spray to the tip of it. It looks uh, bigger. And I, I am, you know, I'm a little picky as an artist. I don't want the beat to look big because I know um, what it takes for them. So uh, there's a lot of flying white here, as you can see, okay? What what it really means is when I'm putting down the color, I skip. You know, I kind of lightly uh, put the color and then I skip and then I put it down. So it's a motion of the of the brush that you put down and skip and put down. And that's something that you, you guys need to learn on your own, okay? Uh, or trying to do the best that you can and uh, see if you can accomplish that. It's actually kind of fun, okay? So I'm gonna put a little bit over here, okay? So that I'm true to nature, but then I'm not worried, you know why? Because I'm gonna use red over here. That's why I did. I decide on this plant, you know, because then it will, you know, have a harmony between the bird itself, okay? And, uh, and so I'm reserving the highlights over here, okay? So if you you know have a hard time seeing that, I suggest that you pause. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead now, and with my um, and so as with my um, practice, I have uh, decided that I wanted to put a layer of white. Uh, no, sorry, a layer of uh, cadmium yellow, a very very gentle layer. Okay, all over here, and then we'll put the green and the surprise blue in the surprise area. Okay, so um. Don't need to uh, stress too much over it, okay? Because there's gonna be a layer. But I try to skip uh, parts um, and because there's preserving highlight, okay? Preserving highlight so the bird kind of sparkle and shine, okay? Now you can see that my, 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 um, my pigment is running low, okay? I'm just gonna let it be and soften here a little bit first, okay? And then because I wanted the bottom here to be white um i know that there's a white breasted one <sighs> what is the name 
um, uh, white-breasted uh, hummingbird, and I I like it, but not a lot of hummingbird have white area actually on the tummy. So I'm using my um, artist uh, license to make this, you know, with a little bit of white-breasted. Okay, you know, so leave that white area because I just I just like that. I really like that. Anyway, so I was talking to you about uh, Dr. Butler. He's one of the uh, my husband's um, uh, colleague. Okay, leave some white over here, okay? Because I want that to be a little bit of a... Uh... And then I'm going to leave this area to drop a little bit of phthalo blue over there, okay? So that's where I'm going to stop with the layer, okay? And so, um, yeah, let's just let it dry for a minute because maybe it's more conducive to, you know, the... Uh, you know, the color combination, okay? So now I'm going to come down here and use my pink spray, okay? And because it is, um, because it is a heart, a heart uh, wings, so when I put in the uh, gray color, I'm going to put in quite uh, deep, you know, but not, not as deep as that, you know, but quite uh, intense pigment, okay? Um, so we were, um, no, so there's nothing to this except it's just pigment, okay? And I, well, actually, I'll show you this part. Okay, I'm going to round it over here. Because I want to stack the feather, okay? The the tail wings over here, okay? So I will show you what I'm going to do, okay? I'm going to leave uh, ever so slightly of a gap between that one and this one, okay? You see that? You see that? There's a gap, okay? That's how I would like to... Um, you know, rendition, okay? So I think that that's very pretty. And um, I want to show you, now, it looks very ugly because, you know, I'm trying all different colors, so I'm piling on color when I practice, okay? I did that too on my um, on my practice, okay, right there. You know, so I'm, uh, you know, I was trying a different thing and then I like it. So we'll just uh, go with it, okay? Okay? And um, uh, so, uh, we have this uh, dinner. They usually sometime once a year at Christmas time they will um, have a dinner where the professor bring their wives. You know, and uh, I know that Dr. Butler was um, artist, so I say, oh, you know, why don't we sit by Dr. Butler this year? And so I went and sat by him and start talking. It was really fun, you know, because he uh, he is the um, you know I don't know if he he doesn't call himself urban sketcher. But that's what he is, okay? So you can see that I don't cover the whole wings, okay? I leave the flying white over there because it looks very pretty, okay? And that's uh, what I wanted to do. And uh, so he uh, he uh, he uh, go here and there and he just uh, sketch. And uh, so I call him an urban sketcher. But um, he doesn't even know what urban sketching is. He doesn't, you know, join the group or anything. But I, I love sketching. So maybe when I'm older, you know, I will join the urban sketching group. And um, so I talked to him about his painting and, uh, you know, what medium he used and, you know, and things like that, you know. But he, uh, I think he's more like an intuitive uh, painter. He doesn't like really um, think about what he's trying to, you know, the benefits and such. I, that, I guess, you know, what I would say, he doesn't quantify it you know, his um, experience, you know, which is fine, you know, because some people just know that it's just very fun and they wanted to do it, but they don't like, like to quantify it. But I'm more a quantifying person. Well, because I'm doing YouTube, and so I had to think through why I do certain things, right? Because, um, and the more I think about it, the more I know that I'm leaving um, the, actually the purple color out. Um, I want you guys to just really, really, really enjoy your painting journey, right? And so I know how good it is for us to do this kind of thing, you know. But uh, I talked to him about it and it was really fun. I like talking to artists. And so I talked to him about um, different artists too. Thomas Marine, you know, is also a, you know, a pen air. He likes to well, bring his oil and then he, you know, he go all over Yellowstone and paint, right? You know, we know the artist point. That was a, a famous point. And then, uh, you know, so so the reason why I round this out, you know, cover more because I don't want it to be too busy. There's a good point where I need to stop, right? And so that was what I just did. 
Okay, and so the this little wing part is also done. Okay, hopefully, uh, let me pause and then come right back. You know, there's a focus on the, on the. You know, sometimes if I forgot to put the focus, it makes me very very sad. Why why am I sad? It's because uh, I felt like I, you know, I need to have the focus better, and then it wasn't there anymore, and so that's why I got sad. But um. I do remember to focus when I, f I film my watercolor video, so don't worry. Um, but anyway, I was talking to you about, okay, now, uh, th after this is dry, okay? Uh, this dry very fast, I think, I felt very dry in my room, actually, okay? And um, uh, after this yellow, the cadmium red, uh, yellow light dry, I'm going to put a sap green, okay? Sap green is nothing but a green with yellow, okay? And you can see you know, the color, I'll show you, okay? I don't know if every one of you had a professional watercolor, okay? I, this is a scratch paper, and then this is what sap green, look like there's yellow, and there's, if there's blue, I think there's more yellow than blue, okay? So if you're wondering, then you can just uh, go and try to find that, you know, color in uh, any of the other palette that you use. But of course, it will be very nice if you actually had, um, had uh, the professional, like the sap green, the one that I use is from Daniel Smith. You know, actually the, the pink seems, uh, uh, you know, expensive, but actually it lasts a long time, especially when I told you, right? You can, now with gouache, you can't do that, but with, uh, with watercolor, you can just like let it sit there for years. And every time you reconstitute it, it'll be good, okay? So now I'm butting against this wing over here. That's why those little blue, was uh, very good and I, I'm going to come in with a little more blue just to separate the green, okay? Because I, I like this little green, a uh, sap green, uh, because it's very bright color mixed with the yellow. I really like that, okay? And so that's how we're going to do the this part and I will... Uh, it all depends, you know, if it doesn't need to, then I won't, but I'm going to put some feather uh, touch over there, okay? over the this part, you know, because that part is like, as you can see, it is not quite finished, right? Okay, that's kind of my sap green. Okay, I, sw I, I, I have to tell you that I really think that this is a fast, but then once I start painting, everything takes time. <laughs> you know, okay, I, what I'm doing is I'm softening this edge so that the sap green and the yellow, when you soften them, they mix together. It's just very pretty. Okay, so that's uh, one uh, of my tips for you, okay? Contribution today is that you um, know that sap green and cadmium yellow light is actually a very, very good combination, okay? Together, they're just very, very pretty. Like, uh, I'll do some more, okay? The softening, if I soften over here, okay? Then you can see they actually mix together. A very smooth transition and also the paint spray together with purple, okay? It's the same thing, okay? Those are very, very good color match. And so I'll just leave it. I won't, I, of course, I wouldn't do a video um, actually telling you guys what good color match is then, because then I will have to spend a lot of time that I could be demonstrating to you guys in doing those things, right? And I don't want, want to do that. I want to spend the time in making paintings so you guys are uh, just have to, you know, watch um, my video to uh, catch the color combination that I so love through the years, okay? That I have um, accumulated in my mind. And it will just come out, you know, as I paint because, you know, it's just like, um, you know, uh, experience, right? I'm just, uh, you know, share my experience and it just come out when I'm painting and when I'm designing. And so that will be what I would really like you guys to learn it through that way instead of um you know me going and make a video of it you know i i always feel awkward i'm very comfortable when i'm explaining during my painting i felt very very awkward when i'm you know um probably because of my language um the choice of word okay we're gonna let this dry and then drop some phthalo blue over there okay um the choice of word that i have or i don't have um it makes things awkward, but for some reason, with watercolor, I'm not. I can just, like, um, tell you guys as I go, okay? So now I'm going into my indigo, and what I'm doing is, while this is still a little bit wet, I'm dropping a little bit of indigo here. Because, and so, okay, uh, as I always say, okay, it's the form of this, <laughs> 
the hip <laughs> of the bird, okay, over here, okay, and I wanted the form to look like it's, um, it is uh, like uh, my usual descriptive word, a pyramid, okay? This is not just a flat triangle. The, the bird at this flight, at this point of the flight, is actually exerting a lot of energy to bend her, his back, okay? To like kind of fluttering his wing and bend his back so he can suspend in air, right? To get his food. And so it costs him a lot of energy. And so he's... Um, flexing this muscle over here a lot and so i wanted to be able to you know at least portray that you know and so it doesn't look like a flat um a triangle it look like uh, you know there's some um flexing flexing of the muscle over there okay and in order to do that i have to make this area dark and i'll make that area a little bit dark okay same thing you know with my little tiny brush She's doing well today. She's not fighting me today. She's picking up pigments, okay? And as I put, drop some of the color over here, you can, you know, you can almost like feel the flexing of the muscle, you know, of the bird. At least that's how I see it, you know, okay? Just a little bit. You don't have to do a lot, okay? And I think that area, so, you know, it look more volume. There's more volume, volume, volume over here. Okay, can't even speak, but that is very normal with me. Okay, and so I I believe that there's enough separation between this wing and the body. Okay, so I'm not going to bother it too much. Okay, this little feathery part that is not a wing actually, the little feathery part. Okay, and so this is the part that I wanted to it to look like it's flexing. Okay, now I'm going in. Ooh. Um, uh, let's change brush to a little bit, little bit bigger. Okay, I'm going in with uh, some phthalo blue. Um, and I'm going to drop a little bit over here, just a tiny little bit, okay, of the pigment over here, just so that it will be true to the nature of what this bird is. Okay, just a tiny bit. and I'm gonna come back and do something over there but I don't want it to look like a drop <laughs> so it needs to be smoother that's what I mean you know I'm such a nerd I I look at uh, I have gone through so many you know paintings in my life uh, I don't even know if there's some uh, painting that I don't I haven't seen of course there are of course there are a lot and uh, I'm just like kind of kidding when I say that but um, I like to now it's the fine-tuning work right now okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the smallest brush that you have and I have and I'm going to put a little bit of a feathery suggestion okay so I'm just going into my uh, um, dioxazine um, oh yeah I just want to tell you this is actually um, the sticks because the sticks is pure pigment you know, so the color is more intense and I, I didn't want them to be a muddy, muddy color. And so I put, I buy the sticks and I cut off it a little bit and just put it in a dish so that I can use that. Okay. So that was why it looks like that. Okay. So I'm going to, you know, put some feathery touch. Okay. Now, not a lot, you know, me, I don't like to put in a lot of uh, feather. I just like to suggest and the way you look at it is like, wow. You know, now it's uh, so sharp, and so I'm going to use a dry brush, you know, not too wet, because at this point, if you use too wet of a clean brush over here, you will probably erase all of your, your feather, right? And so I want it to be lost line and fine line, and then you can see it, but ever so gentle, okay? Ever so gentle and not, uh, not, uh, not so glaring to the eye. Okay, and then I'll put some over here. I'm still using the purple. You know that I can use the purple on the blue too, okay? It really matter not, or you can use gray. Okay? Now, this will... Uh, when I do this, okay, I'm like uh, doing the smoothing part again, okay? When we start doing this, then this area will start looking better. Like they're not as, as disjointed. Maybe if you may call it, I hate to say that, you know, I meant to... <laughs> I meant to have my uh, color looking like that. I'm not, uh, you know, um, because it's very pretty and soft, right? Now, and the feather over here, I'm going to um, 
like uh, not this uh, circle direction. I'm going to like to kind of change direction, okay? Like kind of like this, coming down this way, okay? If you can hardly see me, okay? And then, uh, sorry, bump, bump, bump. And then uh, I will soften that. Yeah, I know a lot of artists because, you know, when I look at their art, I usually read about them, you know, and then, uh, you know, like I tell you that I like to go to, and that's indigo. That's indigo that I just used, okay? Um, and it's too wet and not uh, enough of a, a fake pigment. So I go in and get some more fake pigment and see if it will co uh, co cooperate with me. Uh, it's doing okay. Okay? Um... So uh, I like to go look at children's book, and you know that in children's book, in the art session, at least at, at the college that my husband is teaching, and they actually have, um, um, uh, uh, okay, let me tell you this part. They actually have an art session, okay? I'm coming this way now, okay? To indicate the, the feather going this way, and then it go that way too, okay? But since I like this area to be soft, I'm not going to put a lot of this feathering touch. Oh, wow. I love it, if I may say so. Ooh, that looks good, okay? Just gonna leave it like that. Okay, now, around the eye, you know, I always use a marker, right? Uh, for things that I don't wanna move, like I did this with a marker because I was so nervous. Actually, I'm gonna put a little bit more red on there. I was so nervous, I did that with a marker so that uh, it won't move. And uh, the eye usually, even with the marker, is not intense enough, so I'm going in the black color and uh, intensify this area a little bit okay how are you guys doing I hope you are uh, you know I know the weather is really nice and so you know going out to do uh, sketching is a very and so I can uh, if you um, also know that find me on Instagram Instagram I have a lot of uh, little reels and um, that you can find okay if you search sunset peony then you can see my reels, and uh, sometimes I put my I put my journal uh, like uh, sketching uh, pictures, and I'm going to like my daughter is done with school right right now, and so she had time to help me. Uh, sometimes she will film me, film film me, and sometimes uh, I will just uh, kind of hold the camera and film myself, you know, with uh, some of the journaling. You know, journaling is very very good for us because it gives us a chance to practice and also give us more time to think, okay? Now, I like the intensity of the eye right now, okay? And so, um, like right over here, I promise you, I'll show you what I'm going to do. And so I can use that uh, ultramarine blue, maybe I'll just do that. And I will just uh, do a couple of feather over here, okay? Just a couple of them. It's a suggestion, okay? That you can see that as, you know, I want you to see the feathering touch, but not a lot, okay? Not a lot and not very glaring, soften it. Um, actually, I want one more. Yeah, and so if you go to Instagram and search uh, Sunset Peony, you'll see a lot of my um, little... Because I am not comfortable with talking and filming, uh, actually, um, a tutorial. Maybe in the future, when I'm better with my gouache, I, uh, I also got this. Because I have some old gouache, I got this for my uh, Mother's Day. I bought it for myself. And... Uh, because I wanted to use more gouache because it's because I like to do a background, okay, on my uh, on my journal. Actually, I'll just take a little time and show you, okay, and uh, so you can see these stuff, okay. So go go and look. Um, I like to do background, so gouache is uh, like a big background. So gouache is actually a good thing, and so go and look at some of my stuff. Um, I just like wanted you guys to know that I'm doing thing in Instagram. There's a little bit more. And, you know, than what I have here. If you like, you don't have to. If you like, you know, but uh, this is where all the details of the watercolor skill I'm sharing, right? Okay, I seem to not be able to find the, the picture that I want. If I can't find it, I'm just going to... Okay, I'll just do that myself, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is use the cadmium light again, okay? And, uh, okay. What I'm going to do is put uh, my hand on here in case I make a big mess, okay? I kept me in light and then I'm going to come over here and just uh, do this whole thing, okay? Now this is an uh, orange-reddish uh, plant 
and I'm very very sorry that I have not uh, really go and find out what the name of this plant is but I know that um, you know hummingbird like this plant I know that in my neighborhood they like the trumpet flower now since this is like just a, a little bit of a you know of a background I guess you can call that and I'm not going to I don't do a lot you know for it okay I'm just like trying to just uh, you know indicate that you know I don't want people to be looking at this you know instead of looking at the bird right the focal point and then what I'm going to do when this is still wet I'm going to drop in this orange color that I use for the beak okay but I am not uh, I am actually very very loose over here it's almost like what I did with sketchbook okay with sketchbook when I'm sketching I do not uh I do not do a lot of details and if I wanted to do details you know why I do that is because I wanted to remember if I'm going to turn it into a painting what I'm going to uh, what color or what detail that I should not be missing okay and so I'm like you know that hummingbird are attracted to red color though right I think you know that and uh, so I uh, you know I see them like if I have red geranium they will come, but I don't think geranium had nectar. I'm not sure. You guys can correct me, but I don't think so. And so they don't like really come and uh, uh, they will check it out though. You know, I used to have a, I used to have a hummingbird feeder until I decided to give it a, give it a, uh, up. Because you know why I give it up? Because I realized I'm causing the hummingbird to get uh, woozy because the, you know, like if you don't, um, change there's still a lot of nectar in a few days in the summer it will actually get uh, fermented and so i say oh you know well maybe i i don't want to you know i don't know if it is good for them so i took the feeder off you know and uh, <laughs> you know i don't know i really don't know anything about uh, things like that okay now so this is the open flower okay so i dropped some uh, f uh i dropped some uh, color you know to indicate that it is open so yeah i don't want them to get a little too woozy <laughs> and so um i but i know that my neighbor has some trumpet flower and they go over there to enjoy the trumpet flower and that's why i also know that they do this kind of action okay now i'm using some blue purple to add the, the intensity of this this area over here okay just a little bit and but this is this is nice and loose right and then uh when i do the background which um is that yeah i'm going to do it now uh, i'm going to go over there go over there and drop some green color okay and then oh let's just use a gray color because oh am i going to lift that okay i need a little stick coming over here and so maybe i'll do it after the background how's that um, I say that I'm going to uh, try using this with you on the background. Now, this is a very, the, uh, well, the Chinese say big white cloud, okay? So, I am going to use that, but I'm not going to do a lot of background, though, today with this. But, um, so, I'm going to, like, uh, wet that right now and let it soak, okay? Because usually, I, I use my, my trusty Chinese brush, or I use that other, uh, or I use this brush, uh, but, you know, I just want to try this with you guys. Not that I know where you can find it. And for that, I'm very sorry. Um, so let's go into with our sap green, okay? I'm very, very sure, sorry that I, uh, I'm i not sure, okay? Because, um, wow, I'm butting the green against the green, though. Okay, let's uh, not do that, okay? Let's uh, try some indigo over here, okay? That's better, right? Because I don't want the green to be right next to since we're doing this as a background, okay? And I'm going to make it uh, really, really watery, okay? Now, this brush look like there's absolutely no bones in it. Meaning, you know, now this area, because um, there's not a harsh line, that's why I need to do, you know, it, it, it bends, you know, very, very soft. It just bends. But, you know, we get used to brushes, right? We, we talk about that. We get used to our brush, you know? And then we are just like, oh, okay, you like to bend, and then I work with you. Now the the purple uh, is trying to come out, which I'm very surprised because purple are very very uh, you know hard to hard to make them uh, 
wanted to uh, leave once they are <laughs> once they are on the paper but for some reason a little bit now if that purple come out you know i wouldn't even worry okay but anyway if i ever you know meet you you know i would like to talk uh, <laughs> like i always do i like to talk about um I really like to talk about art. I like to talk about artists, you know. I uh, well, I talk about everything anyway. You know, I I really am a, an awful over uh, nerd uh, in my life. You know, I seldom leave a subject lightly. I usually like, oh, isn't that kind of pretty? You know, um, I usually go in and I will like uh, um, learn something. When I learn something, I learn a lot. Okay, I'm kind of more, almost like an outline over there, but not really, okay, of this color. Okay, but um, I don't want a lot of indigo because I want the major uh, majority of the, the background to be kind of green, okay? But I know that I need some of the indigo right next to things sometimes. Hey, I encourage you guys too, you can try other color too, okay? Like, so as right here, I would probably drop some purple there just for fun, okay? Just for fun. Okay, so not a lot, not a lot of background today, okay? And then I wanted some background over here because I'm trying to make the belly, okay? I still have a little bit of pencil mark over there, right? And so I will use uh, the green also, okay? Uh, uh, the sap green over here you know over here and then i will you know try to have the edge of the belly show up okay you know that's why i needed to do this because this is almost all white okay now because i also i like the lost line and the fine line and so i would just like pull the color that into here okay and then i will you know have almost a uh, a faint color over here so that it's more artistic artistic that you will see that um you know you the belly area almost disappear into the background okay and uh, as you guys know that i i'm like that i do that a lot you guys are very very used to me right okay okay i want this to kind of come out here not for any rhymes or reason because um um, I'm going to uh, drop some uh, splash, some a little splash of color because uh, one of you uh, had asked me, and I told you that at the end of the of the hummingbird, I will do that. Okay, now, um, so I need to come over here and drop the, you know, the gray and indigo mix because um, this plant has uh, has uh, leaves, of course, right? And so I need to kind of, you know, even with the, the without drawing a leaf. Uh, dropping greenish blue color suggests that leaves are okay and I will kind of maybe I'll make a leaf shape over here okay do you think that's a leaf shape <laughs> it is uh, okay <laughs> it is what happened <laughs> and so I'll just leave that mm, so you can see that there are some leaves over there but not a lot you know not a lot that doesn't have to do a lot, that's what I mean. I'm sure this plant has a lot of leaf. Okay, and then I will I will do the splashing and then I will end this video, okay? I really have a lot of fun. This is, uh, I think you'll find that there's some skill going on around here, but, uh, you know, um, not uh, really so much that it uh, is distracting us, you know. It is uh, hard because I'm, you know, softening this and then put the blue right next to it. And then I put some phthalo blue over there, right? And so it might be a little bit like you might kind of wonder a little bit um, of, uh, you know, this is just uh, and it will dry a little bit lighter. Okay, so I'm not even worried. I'll just let it, I'll just let it go. Okay, and then I have a little, uh, you know, part, part of the plants, it looked like a stick. I don't know if I will remember to do that. If I do remember, and I will do that for you, okay? So, uh, now, I uh, I don't want this two uh, form to be disjointed and separated, you know? So I'm using the background to kind of bring it back over here, okay? Now, since we use a lot of color, 
um, we can use that those color too right now okay so it won't be too monotonous okay now um uh i don't want to use red let's just use our purple okay you know just uh, some suggestion of purple over here okay and then uh i'm just like this uh like right now this brush is clean okay i'm just uh getting and um, as, uh, this part wet but it looks too wet to me and so uh, I'm going to think about maybe some purple here okay but you guys can uh, why don't you try okay why don't you try when you're doing your own painting uh, try to you know do some of the color uh, you know when you're doing the background having fun yourself and see if a different color combination actually was kind of it's kind of fun for you okay I, uh, I realized that at this moment that I uh, really need to um, use some gray because there's uh, gray in the bird and I haven't used that okay so I just I'm just gonna drop some over there and drop some over here okay next to the purple okay so this like mm, kind of dropping things actually create movement for the plants and it's kind of pleasing okay now after i stop i might you know like make the red a little bit more intense you know but as of right now i would uh, drop some uh i will drop some on the bottom of the wing okay i'm going to drop some let's see what color let's do the green okay let's do the green and then uh and then i will do the little splashing that uh, one of you guys has asked me okay and because she wanted to see it, it's very, very simple. So I can use uh, a brush that take more. Yeah, let's use this brush to pick up the pigment and use this, you know, so I don't use my hand. Okay, so let's do, what should we do first? Let's do uh, some purple. So I'm picking up some purple, uh, wash of purple, okay? And so what I do is I, I just go on the brush over here, okay? And then I just drop it. I flick on the brush. You see that? Okay, and that's it. That really is it. Um, and then, uh, but I don't like uh, so monotonous of just one color. So what I will do is, oh, how about um, the blue? Okay, ultramarine. You can use ultramarine or you can use uh, just kind of kind of like a bright blue. Okay, now, so the blue and the purple, I can see it, but I bet you can't. Um, and so, you know, then it's almost like one color. So that's, uh, that's a, uh, that's when I go in and say, okay, let's uh, get some greenish yellow color. Okay, and now you'll be able to see it. Now you, you do need to clean the neck of the brush that you flick on because you're not trying to mix color over there, okay? Okay, here comes some uh, yellow and blue, okay? And that's all. You know, you can uh, flick away and do as much as you uh, think is uh, necessary for your painting. Mm. Uh, what should I do? Well, I don't know. When you see the final painting, then you will. Maybe I'll put some more, but I wanted to go in here and make the, and put a little bit more red color on that, okay? Hey, thank you so much. Isn't that fun? Isn't that fun? This is like really, and I think that you should um, do it on your sketchbook or go in, go out and uh, do a painting, you know, because, uh, and then frame it, okay? Because you deserve to have one of these, you know, so that you can, you know, know that and tell yourself that you learn it. And, um, oh yes, my daughter had asked me to add something though. Yeah, yeah, I'll see, I'll see. She wanted me to like put some more white, so the eyes, but I think the eye is quite uh, intense color. So I'll just leave it the way it is, okay? Now, I'll say goodbye now, and this will be fun, and you guys can follow along, you know, have fun. And uh, be sure to subscribe to me, okay? It is very important to me that you guys do that. Um, for some reason, I take a lot of um, happiness in seeing uh, the subscription go up, you know, and uh, and things like that. And, you know, follow me on Pinterest and on Instagram too, if you wanted to. You know, I don't know why. I'm just like that, okay? But anyway, thank you. Hey, thank you for being my friend. Thank you for all of your comments. And I'll see you in the next painting. Thank you.